Hello! In this update, we'll be talking about some distractions I've been running into that have kept me from working on the Stretchful project. Uh, they may be distractions, but they've been a lot of fun, so I figured I'd fill you guys in and, and uh, show you what's going on. So uh, today we're working on driving gauges from the 911 using CAN bus inputs. Well, it's been busy times at the Garage Mahal lately. Uh, as you can see in this photo, we've got a few electrics lined up outside. The, uh, the blue Honda Del Sol that uh, Kirk from Shift EV has, has for sale if anyone wants it. The, uh, my 914, the Recla, the, uh, the Stretch, of course, waiting for its conversion. And inside the shop, we, had, uh, we have this Porsche 914 on the lift getting some service and a 1999 Porsche 911 996 Cabriolet. Uh, this one is owned by Ryan Thorell in Eugene, and Kirk, my friend at Shift EV, has been doing a gorgeous conversion of it to a high-performance electric car. So one of, the, uh, one of the drawbacks of doing a conversion is that very often you end up with extra gauges on the dashboard that are not connected to anything. And so to that end, I volunteered along with my friend Deb to help Kirk get this running smoothly and, and more integrated. What we have is a, uh, we have a BMS in the car, an Orion BMS, that reports the state of charge on the CAN bus. It also reports cell temperatures. Uh, additionally, we have motor temperature sensor that's built into the case of the, uh, the warp 9-inch motor. So uh, Deb and my goal here has been to get those signals displaying on the dash. Uh, here you see a, uh, a version of the dash. We've, we've got one here to work on and another one in the car. And uh, originally we thought it'd be real nice just drive them from the signals that are coming in outside of the dash so we don't have to take apart and, and really work on it. And uh, in doing that, and we've had some help also from, uh, from Ryan Kalb, who was working on this project and got distracted by, by going to work for Tesla. And so, can't blame him for that. So he informed me that uh, the gauge, that driving the gauges from the outside is rather difficult because the Porsche dashboard really thinks it knows better. And if you want to move that fuel gauge at anything faster than a glacial pace, uh, it just either doesn't move or goes into an error state. So uh, after verifying that that was indeed the case, we uh, came to the con same conclusion that he came to, and that was that we would try to drive these gauges manually, um, wiring right into the back of the gauge cluster. And here in this image, you see that uh, we've wired in a ribbon cable uh, to on the, the right two gauges, which would be the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. Those are both stepper motors. And then the gauge that's on the left here, which on the main gauge panel is the rightmost one, is the uh, oil pressure gauge, and that one has a 0 to 5 volt input that's really easy to drive. So in order to do that, we thought, well, we needed some hardware that was pretty compact. Uh, there's not a lot of room behind the dash. Uh, Ryan had started with Arduinos, and so we continued on that, but we took it a step further and uh, went with this here conglomeration of, of parts. And what you're seeing here is a Adafruit version 2 motor shield that has on top of it a Teensy 3.1 microcontroller. This is a uh, Arduino compatible in some ways. It uses the same Arduino programming language uh, and interface. That's stacked on top. The Teensy 3.1 has the advantage of having a built-in CAN bus controller. CAN being the controller area network that a lot of modern cars use to communicate data. Uh, we just added an interface chip on just a little breakout board there, a couple of connectors. Uh, one of the connectors hooks up to uh, wires that go to the temperature sensor on the motor. The other connector provides power and reads the CAN bus signals. 
Additionally, on the uh, right side, you see the back side of a little 5 volt regulator board. This is one of these uh, standard generic Chinese $2 switching regulator boards that uses the simple switcher from National. So we stack all this up so that it fits in a nice small box and uh, the the version 2 of the Adafruit motor shield that's capable of driving two stepper motors. So here we've got it running a demo program that's just cycling the gauges, the, uh, the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge up and down. Uh, in addition to that, I've put an open collector uh, output off of one of the analog outputs from the Teensy board. And that one is, uh, should be, very slowly moving the oil pressure meat needle up and down in this, in this demo. Either that or it stopped if my code decided it had looped enough times. So with the, uh, the hardware basically decided, um, as usual, I recruited Deb to come help. And you see her here uh, working at the test bench, trying to get it all ready. And uh, we're making good progress on it. We've got the gauges moving, we're reading the CAN buses, we're reading the temperatures. Uh, now we just need to stitch it all together and put it in the car and go for a test drive. So what else to show you? Um, here's Kirk working on the, uh, he's working inside the, uh, the 996. This is a, a really beautiful red car. And, uh, and here's another image of it inside the shop where you see the 914 in the background. Uh, that day we had three Porsches in a row uh, in the shop, all of them electric. So quite a density of electrics here in Corvallis. I think that's it for today. That's our update. Um, after this is done and I clean up the shop, I'll try to get back to working on the, uh, on the stretch lock. And we'll have some more updates on that.